The Auto Tech Channel is sponsored by Autocom Associates, your auto PR and marketing partner, and Executive Search Partners, Michigan-born, nationally recognized IT search specialist. Hey, it's Mike Brennan. We're doing another video news update from the Center for Automotive Research Management Briefing Seminars here in Traverse City. And I have with me Summit Ghosh. Uh, who is the CEO and president of P3 North America, which is based out of Southfield. One of their claims to fame is that they have expertise in autonomous vehicle technology. Hi, Mike. How, How you are doing? you doing? So, it's like day two. I've listened to a lot of these folks that say they're autonomous vehicle experts talking about what's going to happen. Most of them agree that uh, we have certain elements of stage one, two, and three. But the four and five, you know, the I'm sitting in my car, take me home, I can't drive, we're way away from that, right? Just that, that's not going to happen anytime soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, one of the dominating themes that we have here at the conference. And uh, I always get the question, um, so when are autonomous vehicles are coming, right? And my answer always is, which ones do you mean? Because if you look at uh, the autonomous level, if you talk about, for example, low speed shuttle yeah, in a, in a geofenced environment, you can have that today. But what you just said, um, I just go in my car, there's no limitations, we can go highway speed, we can go anywhere. That is uh, truly uh, several years out. And that's the common theme that uh, we think at P3, um, uh, uh, through all the work on the technology, as well as what we hear at the conference. And then also, a lot of people are saying that it's gonna, where you're gonna see the more advanced stuff is will be in the, the smart cities, as it were. Um, and that, you know, the more rural areas may not see it for even longer, but, you know, the Ann Arbors and downtown Detroit's uh, where they have the right infrastructure in place, you're going to see it move a little faster. Do you agree? Yeah, and this is also a, a, a common view of, of P3. The stuff will be first introduced in a dense urban environment. And uh, it's not only autonomous, right? You have to have uh, connectivity uh, between the vehicles and uh, with the infrastructure, as well as most likely electrification as the mode of uh, propulsion. And uh, it's easier to build such an infrastructure around the mobility in a city rather than on a, on a rural area. You know? And then also there's uh, changes in taste. Millennials, for instance, probably be early adopters of these vehicles. Yeah. Uh, and certainly there's that Uber Lyft element coming on. I mean, for, for instance, in downtown Detroit, now we have May Mobility, a stage five running around. I, I haven't done it yet, but I'm, one of these days I will. Uh, but uh, the millennials are really driving this too, right? The millennials, so the uh, research have a different approach to mobility and what uh, when I grew up and when you grew up was very uh, uh, desirable was car ownership. Um, might not be so desirable right now. And I can understand that I take Uber and Lyft and these ride sharing uh, services myself. They're very convenient, right? You don't have to worry about anything. At the end of the day, they're very cost effective. Um, and uh, so I can understand that, uh, especially millennials take it uh, as something new and it's very um, uh, desirable for them. And it's interesting, if you look at the total cost of ownership, um, the whole solution to those ride-sharing um, services is automation because the biggest cost factor in the whole thing is the driver, right? right. So that's why you see the Ubers and the Lyfts and, and all these companies uh, try to develop these autonomous technologies because it allows them to actually offer their services at a, at a much more lower cost, which then, of course, increases the take rate, right? And of course, the big thing uh, for longer distance now is platooning. For instance, uh, Army Tadek and Warren had a couple demonstrations over the past couple of years yeah. of using a uh, leader vehicle then having four or five vehicles behind it unmanned yes. that are trailing along behind and I know the trucking industry is really interested in doing that as well because yes. nationwide there's 250,000 uh, truckers that are really short of having enough truckers to be able to handle all the traffic so yeah. Another big area, right? It's another big area, and uh, it's not only the, the, the shortage of truckers, but uh, if you're able to like basically run the vehicles very close to each other, you have uh, no resistance from uh, driving through the wind, right? right. Which immediately increases uh, efficiency, fuel efficiency. And uh, at the end of the day, a trucking company, that's what their biggest cost is, yeah, to move the stuff from left to right. And uh, they, they see uh, advantages through that technology on the cost side as well.
Okay. So if folks want to learn more about P3 North America, how do they do that? They can go to the website www.p3-group.com. Um, our Mobility Innovation Center is in Southfield, it's one of our seven offices in the U.S. We're a global company, we have 4,000 consultants and engineers in 42 locations. Um, so on the website there's contact information for wherever folks are uh, to get in touch with us. Alright, you've been watching video news update from the Car Management Briefing Seminar. Thank you, Mike.